Okay, hello everyone. We are about to do a design review for version 13.1 feature of Orphan Language to do with astronomy. And where are we starting? Yes, so the, the main player here is Astroposition. So I would recommend that we open that page. Okay. And the code is in the X kernel. Okay, I'm running the X kernel. Okay. Now, we haven't looked at this at all before, is that correct? Very briefly, I think on Monday, perhaps, or a few days, no, last week, very briefly. Okay. So the key, so the, this object, of course, is modeled completely on geoposition. And uh, my way of looking at it is that it has three arguments. The first is just numbers. The second is the physics of the problem. The third is the maths of the problem. So the physics is like the datum in geo or the time system in dates, while the maths is like the projection in geo or the calendar in dates. Yes. Once you know the physics, you can express it in many equivalent mathematical ways. Okay, but an astral position is actually an event in space-time. Yes, it's, it's an event referred to a frame, which is the second argument. And then you have the freedom of expressing the spatial coordinates in different ways. And that's the third argument. But so the T, if the T is omitted, it is a thing for all time. Is that correct? Effectively, yes, even though technically it's now. The code will, I mean, if it doesn't specify a T, uh, it's, it's, it will assume now. Whatever the, now means in the arithmetic case. Yes. It's, it's a now of the frame which is in the second argument. And by default, in the same way that in GEO, we have this ITRF2000, uh, here we have the ICRS, which okay. is the main coordinate reference system now used in astronomy since like one decade ago. And this is, this is the International Celestial Reference System, which is for the first time a reference system that doesn't move in space. It, it's a completely new idea in astronomy. How do you mean it doesn't move in space? How can something not? I mean, I don't understand. What about the expansion of the universe and things like that? So what they do is that they, they take like several hundred quasars, very far away quasars. They are so far that we cannot see them moving. And so they give these quasars coordinates that are consistent with the whole thing not being moving to, to micro arc seconds precision or close to micro arc as, seconds. As opposed precision. to the, I mean, th those quasars are redshifted. But that is a, a parallel movement, but the yeah. direction vector is constant. Exactly. Exactly. So, so these, this ICRS is the best we can do to have something non-rotated, non-rotating in space. Before this, all the frames we were using were associated to the rotation of the earth, to the ecliptic, to things like that. And all these planes were oh, always good. moving. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And this is. I hope we have the quasars in, the, in our database, the reference quasars. Um, no, we, do, we don't have quasar data. And uh, all the galaxies that we have are relatively nearby. Uh, I honestly don't know what the reference uh, quasars, quasars are. It'd be interesting to, to know if that's uh, been disclosed. Mm -hmm. I better have been disclosed. Sure. I mean, Absolutely. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, we um, can get. I'm not sure if that would be its own domain or if it would be part of galaxy data because quasars technically are galaxies, but uh, I think we should have them both separate. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I'd have, to, I'd have to find a good database for quasars. Yeah. Okay. Um, Th there is one final technical thing before we start looking at anything else, which is the difference between ICRS and BCRS. And, and the, this is quite interesting. ICRS is like the asymptotic version. It's the direction. Yes. BCRS is a fully relativistic coordinate system, something that can define, that can attach a, 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 a tuple of four numbers to every point in, in space time. And BCRS, B is, stands for barycentric, the solar system barycenter. So the, the center is the solar system barycenter. And then it's, it's one of these frames or coordinate systems that has everything being space like. So it can assign simultaneity T's. Okay, hold on. Everything is space-like as in, so the, I don't understand that quite. So the, you're saying mm -hmm. Mars now 
Go ahead, so, explain. So, so imagine that we are at the very center of the solar system and we have a clock there. Yep. Now, with that clock, we can define, we can send light rays going there and coming back. Yep. Right? So with that trick, we can define some sort of space-like surfaces, which we are going to declare all points of those hypersurfaces have the same time. Yes, I'm just trying to understand that. All okay, but we, we we've got the light going. So in, in astronomy, we always have this question of do we use light cones? And so when we say I'm observing something, I'm referring to the time of my observation. So the, the light rate was emitted many, many years ago. Yes. Or we have found a way of constructing hypersurfaces. Yeah, I understand. Like the crisscrossing of photons, like I, what is the, the, some ladder construction, things like that, where you can crisscross things to get something which is the simultaneous space-like surface. Exactly, yes. So this BCRS is the fundamental um, coordinate system, which is constructed that way. It, it's, it's, a, it's a way of assigning four numbers to every point in space-time. And you can refer to now as a space-like surface. Okay. Okay, so when you, when you say now, mm -hmm. that's, I see, I see. That's space like a service, but you don't know what happened in the now, in the elsewhere now, until a light cone time has passed. So by now, we, we are referring essentially to the hypersurface of this yeah, BCRA it. system that, that is crossing us right now. Aren't we going to need some light cone functions that answer questions like, given that you are at this point in the BCRS frame, mm -hmm. what is the time delay from that point? Right. Yes. Um, so this is handled uh, further down. So all these frames have parameters. And, and by default... Oh, light. Yeah, go ahead. Go exactly. Ahead. Light time. Light time will have three values. Geometric, which is what we just described. I'm using now in a in a in a space like cyber surface it will be advanced or retarded uh -huh. and so with these we are saying i'm referring to the observation time so i'm i'm saying where mars was before because i'm 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 giving the observation time of the light rate arriving at me yes. not where mars is right now in the bcrs yep exactly so we control it with the, that parameter Right. This is the sort of thing that might deserve a different symbol, but because the changes are so small, it's not like when we change from geoposition to geogrid position, in which the numbers are totally yeah, different. This it's, is a subtlety right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But but very important for us for observations, of course. What on earth is the wavelength thing? Yes. So Oh when, God, this business. Oh no. Exactly. Okay. When we are observing from the earth, lights, light rates go through the atmosphere. And they change a lot. So we have to model the atmosphere. Oh, that's oh God. That's okay, why we so have this is a, This is an effective astro position. So oh, I'm so confused. So this astro position mm -hmm. is based on an observation on the Earth. Or, or somewhere else. Like it could be the solar system, right? Right. So, but I mean, normally, if you're using the ICRS frame, mm -hmm. then I don't understand how. Okay, in your in your physics and mathematics characterization, mm -hmm. where does the um, um, uh, you know wh where does the business about aberration in the atmosphere and so on come in? Okay, so if we are looking from the solar system body center, there is no atmosphere to worry about. So the BCRS does not have those parameters. Okay. However, if we are looking from the frame that we call horizon, then we are we have to give a location on Earth or some somebody else or somewhere else, and then we have to provide those parameters. Well, hold on. So, so do we so really the, want to call it horizon. It's it's typically called horizontal, and for example, we have now already celestial system goes to horizon to refer to that frame in, in functions like uh, some position. 
So that's why I'm I'm imitating that. But we could use some other name. Okay, but but it's it's super confusing. I mean, in other words, the question of whether the thing has an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. right? Are we? I mean, like if you say Jupiter, for example, and if you're on Jupiter and you give a geolocation on Jupiter, whatever the heck that means. Well, let's say Mars, for example, because it has a surface, so we can refer to a. Yeah. Location. Okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do we have enough of a model for the Martian atmosphere that we can do this? Um, no, no. At at the moment, the values are Earth values, but that's why we provide the parameters so that you can specify your own values. I see. My plan was to effectively remove these unless you are on Earth. If you are on Earth, we use standard values, though you can modify them. I'm, I'm not planning to consult in real time what's the temperature of this location, things like that. We, we just have standard values. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Although you could say air temperature colon greater than air temperature of wherever. Sorry, I didn't get that. Well, I mean, you, you're allowing you to specify the air temperature. So when you make the call to astro position, you mm -hmm. could retrieve the air temperature for that particular location at that time. Right. We could, but it, it's going to make the whole thing very slow. No, I understand that, but I, I'm not suggesting, I mean, you know, you could cache it, right? You could say air temperature, you know, you could say with air temperature equals blah, 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 and then mm -hmm. feed it into each other. Okay. Let's talk about other planets for a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it seems to me, you know, the case of most interest, since currently 100% of our users live on this planet or, you know, that is their permanent home is on this planet. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like we can treat that as special, so to speak, and especially since we have much more data about it. And it seems like to be able to say, I mean, so sun position, if you say sun position, you have a model. Can, can you do that where, where sun position is referring to Mars? Does that work right now? No. Okay. So sun position is specifically for the Earth. Correct. Although we could make it work for Mars. We have enough data to make it work for Mars, right? Possibly with this new stuff. Um, it hasn't been factored in yet, but. Okay, fine. But so, so I'm trying to understand. So I kind of feel like, let's see. So some position takes a geolocation. We could have a geolocation comma Jupiter or comma Mars. Yeah. But geolocation is normally, or it takes an actual geolocation as an argument, right? A geoposition, yes. Right. So if I say geoposition zero zero geomodel error moon, it's it's a second argument. We don't even need the option. Just an entity. Yeah, or, or a string. Something could work. Something like that could work. It doesn't right now, but right. I think that would be nice to have that work. I mean, I don't think it's beyond our capabilities to figure out how to make that work. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to be careful with which frame we are referring to, because some position right now uses Earth-based frames. So, it, I mean, it would be also it would require also generalization of the celestial system. No, but but the horizon okay. frame here is at a given geolocation, where the geolocation is of whatever planet we're talking about, right? Yes, but even that would require some orientation of the, of the, of the horizon and things like that. I see. The question is, which way is north? I, I, exactly. Or, I mean, is the planet precessing? We have precession, precession models for the Earth, but we would need to consult precession models for Mars to convert. Oh, to... boy. But, but at least, at the very least, other than the which way is north, which affects the, the um, right ascension, mm -hmm. the that or affects the um, azimuth, basically. The azimuth, exactly. Yep. Um, right. So let me see, just to understand this for a second. So the term horizon at a given geolocation. Look, I mean, this is a corner case. Let's not worry too much about this case. We've got plenty to worry about dealing with the Earth, first of all. So horizon means... Horizon coordinate system. Yeah, on the Earth. 
for now. But but you're saying the terrestrial, the the ITRS system, if you gave it a geolocation on Mars, what's it going to do? The ITRS. This, this one, your yes. terrestrial reference system. What's it going to do if you give it a geolocation on Mars? Well, that one is for the Earth. So we need to create some sort of, I mean, yes, I haven't added it here, but we should have one called, for, for example, planetocentric. And then we can specify which planet we need. We could generalize also ITRS, but ITRS is very, very precisely defined with the properties of the Earth. I understand that. But Horizon, look, to my mind, Horizon, what's the difference in Horizon and these ITRS things and so on? So all these other ones are centered at the center of the Earth. Oh, I see. So, the, so that's there on is, the surface. Exactly. Horizon is the only one that is at the surface. And therefore, it's the only one that worries about the atmosphere, our geolocation, etc. I think it's not got the right name here. Does it have other names in astronomy? Um, yeah, Off the top of they, my they, head, Horizon Coordinate System is what I've always heard it called. Um, yeah, but they that's call it, top, go, they go call it topographic. That's one. Ugh. But I mean, the difference between all these other ones is that it is... The, 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 main, the main difference, so we have first, so the, there are like three sets here. The one centered at the solar system body center, the one centered at the, at the Earth center, the, the geocenter, and then the ones, the only one centered at the location. Why don't we call it Earth surface? Earth surface. And then you've got to give a geolocation as well in that case. Mm -hmm. If you're giving Earth surface as... I mean, okay, so what happens if you're in space? If you want to know from the ISS, for example. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, Jose, didn't you say there's already a kind of a, a known reference system for satellites? That's one that you haven't done yet. I don't remember what that one was called. Well, that, that's complicated. A, yes, there is a very technical thing here, which is that did you see in the second set, there is the meme and the tete. So the, these, the meme means mean equator, mean equinox. And the other one is true equator, true equinox. There is an intermediate one called teme. Okay. Which is the one used by the satellites. And it has some weird definition that I don't yet have. Um, okay. But so, so the point there is that these are frames. Once you are in space, you are not interested on a horizontal plane you directly use frames that are oriented with the, with the Earth axis. Right. So, so the sequence is you've got inertial frames first. You've got non-inertial but, but non-rotating frames next. Exactly. Next, you have the rotating frames. And finally, in a different bucket, which I think should be separated off, is the, geo, is the Earth surface one. Exactly. Yep. Um, I mean, I, maybe yeah. we should call it geosurface. Mm -hmm. I think nobody will can be confused about what that means. It's the surface of a, of, and then, you know, if you say geosurface, yeah, it's a coordinate system. So if, if you are, you know, 200 miles up from the geosurface, mm -hmm. it's still referenced, you know, references the geosurface. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I think we should call it geosurface as the coordinate system and then geolocation could in principle take a moon geolocation and so on. And mm -hmm. tough luck if you, I mean, Jupiter just is not a part of the game because it doesn't have a surface. Right. Or at least not one that we'll get to. And in fact, it has multiple coordinate systems depending on what latitude you're at. <laughs> so it's even more complicated. Oh, really? Yeah. It rotates differentially because it rotates faster oh, at the yeah, equator yeah. than it does at the poles. Right. Um, okay. All right. Uh, looks reasonable to me. Um, now, given a frame, different coordinate systems can be used. Now, I don't understand that statement. Yes. Uh, aren't the coordinates like lat-long coordinates? How can they depend on the projection? Uh, no, no. Oh, lat-long are always spherical coordinates. 
they are always referred to a central point or, or at least a surface from which you have angles. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you want to say X, Y, Z. I want Cartesian coordinates or cylindrical coordinates around the axis of rotation. It's still the I, same frame. Okay. So what are the units? And, and Cartesian coordinates, actually Simon on our live stream is asking, are the coordinates just X, Y, Z in light years? Can we get that? Like for a star, for example, how would we get the astral position of Alpha Centauri in X, Y, Z coordinates? Okay, so let, let's do this as an exercise. Mm -hmm. The nearest 10 stars, I want them in X, I mean, we have this already in ast ast astronomical data, I think. The X, Y, Z coordinates in light years relative to us. Right. So, yeah, we so, have a property called helio coordinates, which is uh, actually centered at the sun, not the very center. But um, uh, it'll give you the X, Y, Z in um, um, a standard X, you know, Cartesian coordinate system for every body that we have in all the astro domains. Okay. But mm -hmm. so, so wait a minute. That, and that is this, is that a rotating coordinate system rotating somehow with, you know, I don't understand how that works. Is that relative to like the first point of Aries or whatever? The yeah, it's. I don't remember which direction the x-axis is pointed at. It's probably the air point of it, first point of Aries, but I don't remember off the top of my head where it's oriented. Okay, right. But uh, that, so that's a direction that itself moves. So that's why you always have to say of which date. So now th that's precisely what has been gained by using the ICRS. Now you don't have to say the date. In right. Which so you... we should be able to quote the positions of Alpha Centauri and Barnard Star and whatever else in ICRS coordinates. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then those uh, coordinates can be Cartesian or cylindrical or spherical. Okay. Um, so the, the ICRS is very close to uh, an equatorial system. So the, the XY plane is very close to the XY plane of the Earth in the year 2000 beginning of 2000. Okay, okay. So it's not that, I don't know, how is that oriented relative to the galactic plane? One knows that because we can see where the Milky Way is in the sky and it's tipped. Without looking up, I want to say there's something like 26 degrees or something like that. I don't remember the exact angle of the ecliptic with respect to the galactic plane, but there, it's a measurable okay. angle. So okay. all, all these six frames that are in the first section, the initial ones, those are all fixed and there are well-known matrices, 3D rotations to go from one to the other. Okay. Sorry. The first two are essentially the same one. So it's five. Okay. So to convert between them, we're just using astro position as a wrapper with a different frame outside, and that will okay. give us the... Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, so just to understand, like, when... How does this work? Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. So the point is, just like with geoposition, if I say geoposition of a particular place mm -hmm. and that's an entity, and then I give in the second argument the stuff about datums and so on, it will compute. Yeah, okay. So in this case, what you're saying is you'd say astroposition of Betelgeuse, comma, you know, uh, Tetty or something. Mm -hmm. And that would give you the astro position of that in that. Exactly. So I think this is a good moment to look at some examples further down. Okay. Can I, can I ask this question? What would, yeah. in the coordinates, what units are the coordinates in? Yes. So, so this, is, this is some sort of arbitrary decision at the moment. So angles, I'm using radians uh, just to avoid continuous change to degrees, but we could use degrees as well. Um, and then... Uh, Times, I'm using Julian dates, and distances, I'm using meters. Internally. Externally, we can use whatever we want. Or, or for typesetting, we can use whatever we want. Yeah. But they're going to be quantity objects, or they're they going to be naked numbers in, in meters. Internally, they are naked numbers, like in geoposition, because we want to be able to use tons of them in packed form. Yeah. But... Something I'm changing with respect to geoposition is that this will always be typeset because the units in Astro are a lot less homogeneous. So, for example, right ascension is always given in, in right ascension hours, minutes, seconds of right ascension, while declinations are given in degrees. 
Right. That, that already makes the whole thing rather complicated from the readability point of view. Well, okay. So we've got a bunch of unit disasters here. Mm -hmm. To me, you know, we should solve the packing problem, which is an internal problem, independent of, of declaring the units in quantity objects. I think it would be really nice to get these units always to come out with quantity objects. And I think that there will need to be an option to astro position that basically says what units you're going to use, because that way you can wrap, you know, the the um, uh, you know, the thing for stars. You can wrap it in something which says, "Give it to me in parsecs." I see. Now, one thing is how we store it internally, and another thing is what do we get with with, with properties. So again, like geoposition, geoposition, you have properties, and you can get latitudes, longitudes, etc. Yeah, well, I mean, there's the sort of outrageous fact that the, you know, the, you know, the universe is 10 to the 26 meters across. So that's smaller than 10 to 38, which is the limit of what we can store in, am I remembering correctly? That, well, that would be a 32 bit. We can go bigger than that, right? For, for, um, how big can we go in floating point? Yeah, we, there's no problem in storing a distance in meters anywhere in the universe. Yeah, no, not at all. If we're using elementary lengths, well, different story. We, but we don't yet know what the elementary length is, so that's probably 100 orders of magnitude smaller. So anyway, never mind. Um, we're not going to count these things in elementary lengths. That's for a, that's for a future design, for a future whatever. Um, okay. we, we, we could use astronomical units too, perhaps. Yes, I and mean, we could use many units. But I mean, my point right. is that we don't know what units we want to use. Right, and therefore we should be able to give an astro position. We could, I mean, don't we have a what is the thing? Target units, yeah, target units, right? Is oh, we, this is broken? The um, uh, of course, that could be mixed too because astro position may contain both angles and distances, right? I know, I know, I know. So we have to be more sophisticated about this. I'm not sure if this is quite the right um, option to use, but I think we're going to need an option to astro position, which says what units. I mean, look, really, we should get quantity objects out because that's the only way we're not going to get. Ah, the frustration is that as soon as you're dealing with these in bulk, you don't really care about the quantity objects. They're all going to be the same. But I, I think internally, I still think we should use numbers in some arbitrarily chosen unit. And then the extraction is what requires a unit. And I agree with you there. So we could have astro position bracket bracket. And then in another per, pair of brackets, we say, I don't know, um, coordinates, comma, meters or coordinates, comma. Yeah, I understand. Ex uh, two arguments. Exactly. When you have the, I mean, for, for geo position, right? I mean, if I say something like geo position of um, New York, for example, and then I say, okay, now what happens if I do a sub value of this? So at, here we still return a number, but we have the function latitude, and that returns a quantity. Always in degrees. Okay. This could this could be generalized, and we have latitude comma. I don't know. Oh, we could also say latitude quantity as the as the accessor here. Yeah, we we could do that indeed. And maybe that's the same thing we should do with astro position. Just have something or other quantity, mm -hmm. like right ascension quantity. And right ascension on its own is just a number. Right. Sounds fine to me. Um, I think we have accessors also to control the order. You can say latitude, longitude, or longitude, latitude. Sometimes people want the other order, things like that. So this is pretty useful. Yes. yes. But okay, but so, so again, let's take this exercise. I want the nearest stars, XYZ coordinates, parsecs. Uh, how do I do it? So I think we, we, we would start by saying astroposition of a star and mm -hmm. um, astroposition of, of Sirius, for example. And that gives you the, um, 
that, that will that will, will give you yeah evaluate that oh my goodness right well, well you that, said it was fragile yes but that particular case i thought it would work because it's in the in the, i mean that's is this today's that, build Stephen? work for me is this today's external or is this yesterday's or that's yesterday's hmm. Hmm. that might be improved it yeah. might be improved today do you want to try it the let me try that, it locally that, first and I'll, I'll report back <laughs> that should work for me I, I think it's the first example or one of the first examples further now Sandra on a live stream is saying check unit convert. Quantity and target unit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that, look, so long as we can get quantities out of astro position, mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of think what we should say is astro position of just like latitude here just gives a number. Latitude quantity gives a quantity. Yeah, it's still broken in today's build. Okay, and then if you want to convert it, you're using unit convert. Um, I mean, I think we got to get some experience using this thing, and maybe we'll want some other helper functions, just like we added latitude as a function for geoposition. Does that make sense? Yep. Um. Do we have latitude, longitude? Is that, is that a function that we have? Yes, I think yes. so. Yes, yes, we do. Good. I mean, so that's the same. I mean, maybe we want to wrap a function for astro position. We call it right says, ascension declination? <laughs> well, it could be called that, but it could also be called um, astro coordinates. Okay? And it could take a second argument. You feed it an astro position. You give it a second argument that specifies all kinds of random stuff about the units you want and all this kind of thing. And whether you want horizon units, altitude azimuth, or whether you want right ascension declination. Yes. And then an astro coordinates would return coordinates, not quantities by default. See what I'm saying? That would be inconsistent with what latitude longitude does, which returns quantities, right? Yeah, I, I would say by default, it would return some useful quantity. Perhaps we can have a value that removes it. No, quantity. but I'm, I'm, I'm saying that Astro coordinates, a coordinate system, coordinates I claim and numbers, not quantity objects. I see. So by that name, you're, you're getting out of that box. Okay. Whereas if you want the quantities, you do them as access or properties. I see. That's at least a first thought. Sandra is commenting that... that um, uh, in unit convert, we have things like SI base units and imperial units and so on. Yes, but uh, sadly, that doesn't, for example, tell you about how to do angles. Well, maybe SI says radians. I'm not sure. I guess it does. I guess it does. I mean, that's been a big argument about whether angle is another unit system there. Okay, can, can we... Um, so I think I understand. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that it. it this works for me. I'm, I'm sorry that it, it's broken in, in your build. So I, I can show some examples if you want sure. me to. Show them, yeah. Okay, so, so we can add like like quantities and they will be converted. You know, I, I'm sorry, I, that telescope is not making it for me. <laughs> that icon come from? Yeah, um, it, it, I just looked for some astro-related icon in icon data. It's, it's the one I found. Yeah. Okay. I, I think what we should use there. Well, mm -hmm. What do we have for geoposition? We don't. We, I say we don't have it for geoposition, because mm -hmm. geoposition gives the naked coordinates. Exactly. Yes. So I mean, there is such a big change here, right? Because this is what people want. They want the angle of right ascension in in this uh, mixed notation, while this is degrees. Um, and we discussed the other day that the yeah, signs should be wrong. Yeah. Um, Okay, listen, with, the, with respect to the telescope, mm -hmm. that icon, can we ask Jeremy about that icon? And then I would suggest something which is just some configuration of stars. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we do in, in geoposition is that we, we kind of have a little map of all the points when we have many. When there is only one, we show the numbers because they, they are directly what people input. Well, here yeah. they are not. 
we should discuss that thing about showing all the points. I mean, in other words, in I don't know what what um, what projection do we use to show the points? It is essentially a correct number. Okay. Directly lateral. Okay. Well, I mean, for astral position, I I have no idea. I mean, we could show that position on the celestial sphere in principle in that icon. Mm -hmm. I think that's a bit weird. It, it, it might be very small. complicated because you'd need context. Mm -hmm. And that's for such a small icon, it's hard to give that kind of context on such a small right. Well, then, then I think it's just a, some configuration of stars, some decorative configuration of stars. Okay, so that is that. So Sirius there. So, okay, so, so these, now... Exactly. So this consults entity value and gets the coordinates. Okay. So can, can you tell me where Sirius is in the sky for me right now, so to speak? So for that... It will be like sun position. What is the thing that tells me where do I look up in the sky to see Sirius? But what is the altitude azimuth for Sirius? Um, Presumably, you'd have to say, you know, you get, get the astral position first, then you have to convert it, right, Jose? Yes. Now, the, <laughs> this part, I don't know. That, that might be work. broken. <laughs> exactly. So, but it, the change would be something like, Take that value and now convert it into the, the horizon uh, frame at your geolocation. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to make a suggestion. Maybe we should mm -hmm. have a function called sky position as well. That's similar to sun position, but sky position just tells you, just does this, just takes an object and just tells you where is it in the sky. Because that's, you know, since we are currently on the surface of the earth most of the time, uh, I spent my whole life on the surface of the Earth, more or less, maximum. But yeah, the furthest I've ever been away from it is fifty thousand feet, roughly. Once, yes. Anyway, never mind. Um, the uh, but but what I'm saying is, if you want to find the, I want to just know the position of Sirius in the sky. But this this is a specification of the position of Sirius in the sky. It's just that it may not be with respect to the three axes that you want. Astronomers are more likely to use right ascension decl declination as the sky position, uh, whereas uh, an yeah. amateur observatory, uh, an amateur astronomer might be more interested in how high is it above my horizon, things like that. So it kind of depends on who your audience is. Okay, but if we had a sky position function, it is dealing with geolocation to here, it's dealing with horizon. Wait a minute, the BCRS frame. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is the same one as ICRS, as I said. So. But I don't even understand why that right ascension declination that's in that frame. That's with respect to the barycenter of the solar system. Yes. Which, is which I think is weird, weird. which, I, which I think is weird. I, I was going to suggest that something we should have as the default is we should default. If we're going to default to right ascension and declination, it should be at least centered on maybe your geo position, dollar geo position or something like that. Because, but, but, but you see, the problem is that this is something inertial. So if we refer to something that is on the earth, that's going to be changing. So right. when yes. you consult a, a, a catalog, they give you numbers that do not change. And then if okay. you want to change to something else... I've got a suggestion. Okay. Planets. I've got a suggestion that I think it's super confusing to give, to write that as right ascension declination and that somehow we've got to indicate that that is a frame... Look, if we said frame BCRS peren, uh, you know, solar system barycenter or some such other thing at least you know that's not look up in the sky or something i mean in other words to indicate in that thing i mean the, the b means solar system barycenter i know so that's silly but but okay but look the basic point is those coordinates are pretty damn meaningless to people yeah, they're, they're technically nice and convenient to use for computation, but from a user experience point of view, it's going to be very confusing because I saw right ascension and declination. No, I know, and, and you think it's a second sky, to mean, right? Yeah. So I, I think that this astro position, arguably, what we should do here is just indicate that those are the coordinates, don't label them, just say BCRS frame, and then give those things, possibly even in something like radians or something, because it doesn't matter because they're just basically, it's like, a, it's like encryption keys. They're essentially just a hash code for this is the position of Sirius. 
Jose, do they actually call the coordinates in the BCRS right ascension and declination? Is that do they still use yes. the same terminology? Yes, because they are equatorial coordinates. I mean, okay. the BCRS is almost what you think of equatorial coordinates. It's just that when you say equatorial coordinates, you have to very, be very precise because the Earth is moving, it's, it's, it's precessing. So the equatorial coordinates that we project from the Earth onto the sky change. So this is just a very, very precise specification of what you mean by that. Okay, but here's my suggestion. Okay, mm -hmm. My suggestion is that we have a total of three functions, astroposition, astrocoordinates, and sky position. Okay, and sky position is something that gives you stuff related to things on the Earth by default. You might be able to get that by, from astro position by giving explicit, you know, geosurface, uh, you know, geosurface, the, the, pla the planet is Earth, the, you know, blah, 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 all those kinds of things. Would sky position only apply to Earth or would it also apply to things, say, if you're on Mars? Well, we, 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 yeah, we can give some geomodel thing that we can give something that, um, the point is, it always depends on your geo position, uh, so wherever you're at. Right. Ank on our live stream is saying current sky position. Yeah, we, we've kind of crossed that bridge with sun position and now, which don't say current now. They just say, you know, they're just, it's sort of known that it changes. Um, but of course, sky position is only going to change if it's altitude azimuth. If it's, if it's right ascension declination, it doesn't change. Unless it's a planet. Good point. Or an asteroid or anything else that orbits in the solar system. Yeah. In fact, oh. I, I got confused when I tried creating an example using Mars and I tried to reproduce uh, uh, retrograde motion. And when I first did it in this coordinate system, I didn't see it because the sun is at the center, you're at the very center, and there's no retrograde motion from yeah, there. You yeah, only yeah, see yeah. retrograde from Earth. And so I realized I had to switch to uh, uh, the J2000 okay. or whatever the one is. And by the way, presumably we will be able to, you know, satellites will be able to give the astro position of the ISS, right? Um, yes, yes. I again, they will be naturally expressed on, on frames that are centered at the center of the Earth. Yeah, but we should be able to convert it to BCRS if we wanted to. Y yes, I mean, it will be a, now a very long vector from the center of the solar system, but, but yes. Tough luck. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they can, of course. But by the way, why are we using BCRS as the default, not ICRS? If you say ICRS is the coming up and coming coordinate system. The truth is that I have been doubting that a lot, and I'm, I still. So because people refer to both equally and meaning the, the, the same thing, they use more frequently ICRS. But the truth is that BCRS is the properly defined thing. As I said, ICRS is the asymptotic version of BCRS, the thing that defines the orientation. Okay. ICRS doesn't say anything about coordinates near this, the sun, while BCRS does. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. But then, okay. So look, what I'm advocating, and we're going to need another meeting because we're running out of time here. And, um, uh, we should get another meeting in the next couple of days on this. Mm -hmm. We're getting close, but I let's think about the sky position and astro coordinates as our other ways of accessing this information. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, and then what is this astro observe thing? Remind me of that again. Yes. So the the question here is the general problem of observing one object from another, taking into account where it was when the light was emitted. Right, so internally, this, it will be controlled by this parameter of of um, of astroposition, and essentially, it means rather than giving me the position where it is right now in the hypersurfaces of BCRS, give me the position where it was when the light was emitted that I'm receiving right now. Yeah, and so so it's a function that automatically will always give you this retarded uh, coordinate. Yeah. Okay, hold on. But it's it's a syntactic sugar. Yeah, but I mean, it's for a pretty obscure thing. Not so much, because if you want to point your telescope, what you are interested in is actually in that other coordinate. Yeah, right, right, right. This place like hypersurfaces doesn't help you. Exactly. Yeah. 
that that's just for computation. It, it's a clearer thing to work with, but it's not the real thing you observe. By the way, when you, I mean, you're accounting for the motion of planets, mm -hmm. but you're not accounting for the peculiar motion of stars, right? Uh, that's proper motion. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. So, so there is an extension that they haven't written here, which is that there is an, a seven-parameter input, which which will say t alpha delta r, and then the velocities on alpha delta and r. And that's that's something that's what catalogs of stars give. And th with that object, as soon as you do a computation, it will just remove the velocities and give you the well, very, very uh, new catalogs of stars have that, like Gaia, which was its whole purpose was to measure the, p the proper motions of stars. By the way, why don't we package those into a, into a vector? I mean, rather than having them as seven parameters, why don't we say, in that case, if you're going to give it, you can give T comma list alpha delta R comma list alpha prime delta prime R prime. It, well, again, it's packing what worries me. But if you have a large collection of things, we, okay. we, we okay. really want it I, to be packed. But that's what, exactly why we're building this um, uh, data container business. Yes, that's, that's to allow that, you that to pack happen. and unpack more complicated things. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I, I, in this first um, version, th this is not yet uh, documenting the proper motion. So, so proper motion is the motion of the thing you are observing, and then aberration is the consequences of the motion of the observer, right? Because if yeah. if the observer is moving, then the light rays are tilted. Yep, 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 yep. And so it, it's very standard to do all these computations in a way in which you can include or not include effects. Let, let me make a comment here. I mean, yep. we don't have built into the system a bunch of obvious relativistic things. Maybe we should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, I, I mean, the, the formula for aberration is not complicated, but I mean, the, some of these things, by now, since we're, we're using relativistic effects here, we should be able to factor them out. And for mm -hmm. example, we should be able to take a, what is the right answer? We should be able to take a, a, um, a four-vector point in space-time. And I mean, it's a frames thing, right? We should be able to say, in this inertial frame, specified in this way with this gamma, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is the, I, I mean, one doesn't usually think about it this way. In a sense, what's the projection of that uh, four vector into that frame? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I think you're right. In the same way that we have things like Pauli metrics, we could have Lorentz matrices. Yes. Yeah, we should. We should. And that they will have some unit thing with, um, you know, we can have... By default, they can have a gamma that's dimensionless, and otherwise they can have something which is dimensional with respect to the speed of light. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Okay. Uh, okay, but I, I think this observer thing is right. Is Where is it now? Where is it for your sense of now? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, to me, that's more a sky position story. Mm -hmm. You know, the case of that, to me, the sky position would, by default, use the retarded coordinates. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the case you want. I mean, the case, the extremely obscure case of I've got a satellite, a spacecraft going to wherever, you know, the spacecraft going to Mars is decided it's going to have a little convo with the spacecraft going to Venus. That's a very obscure case. Right, I mean, I, I think that, because that's the case for an observing one thing from another, neither of them being Earth. I, I claim we should put this functionality into sky position. Okay. So, yes, I, I, see, I see what, what you are saying. Uh, to me, it will still be a particular case of the general astroposition, but it will be of a, course, par of course. a particularly useful case. Yeah, Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Because I think the other case for the general astroposition is something that one can do with this light times and things like this. Mm -hmm. Now, the name, I'm not fully sure, because when, when 
when one refers to the sky, typically you are saying, I don't know the distance. So I'm projecting things to infinity. Well, astroposition wants to know the distance. And I think this is an independent problem. Fine, but I think that, well, I'm saying, look, it's the same thing as geoposition. Geoposition usually doesn't care about the altitude, but you can put it in if you want to. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. And I think, um, let me just ask this question. It seems to me we're going to need an astro graphics. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And we, and we might need a sky graphics as well, which might be different. Mm, not really. Let, let, let me look for something I can show you. We have early versions of sky graphics working. Yes. Um, oh, you want to share again? I, I need to go in a second here. Uh, sorry, no, um, I can I, I can share now. Sorry. Okay. Yes. So this is the the future astrographics that we were planning, and it's it, it's it's right now modeled inside geographics. It, it's just that we have a, a sky to model, and it will be able to do projections and show maps like this, or we, we can zoom into a polar area, etc. I mean, it would oh, sorry, be just... so, so show me that first one again. I'm, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. That's lovely. What is that? Is that, is that the Milky Way? That's the Milky Way. And this it's, is uh, a, it's the equatorial. Sky, yeah. This is equatorial coordinates. And you see here, for example, Orion. You see the, the, the belt of Orion. Mm -hmm. So how do I see the Milky Way as straight? If I use galactic coordinates, it better be straight. E exactly. I... Exactly. And for example, just, just by telling the system that you want a, at the center a star that is, you see, just, it, it will already copy that. But when, when I look up in the sky, mm -hmm. okay, let's be very naive here. I'm, you know, I see the Milky Way as a straight line because I'm seeing, okay, so, okay, let's just to, to pull together a few things. We hopefully mm -hmm. will soon have spherical image, right? Spherical image would be a correct sky image. Am I making sense? Whereas image image is a projected sky image. Yes. But spherical image could be the actual correct sky image. Right. It would be like, like a 3D version so they can, I can rotate with the mouse or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But in particular, it means that in, in VR, for example, you can just have it be right. Okay. But now normally, the projection that is the effective projection that is the projection onto my eye is what? That's basically this, whatever this is. What is this? Is this orthographic projection? I think this is Lambert, Lambert Asimusson, which is the one that can describe the whole sky. So this point over here is the same point as. Okay, as but, point but I'm here. just asking a naive question. When I look up at the sky, mm -hmm. right, I am effectively doing a, my retina is two dimensional. Mm -hmm. right? I am taking the three dimensional thing painted on the sky and I'm mapping it to my two-dimensional retina. What is the effective projection that I'm using? I, th I think from the point of view of geoprojection, that's a stereographic projection. It's like like oh, making everything that. going through a point or, or on the surface of the sphere. Okay. But so is this is there a stereographic projection for geoprojection? There isn't, is there? There is, of course, yeah. There is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's one of the conformal projections, yes. But so for the Earth, because looking at the Earth from space, what projection are you using when you look at the Earth from space? That's the same type of problem as the one I'm describing here. That right. So, a graphic projection or something different? So those, are, so those projections that si simulate what the eye does are, are called the um, perspective projections. And so you, have, you, have, you can specify parameters of a camera. Okay, with the focal length and so on. Uh, yes, and the aperture and things like that. And, um, and then, in, in a sense, it, it's, it's like, imagine that, that you have the, the, the circle of the sphere, 
if you look at it from very, very far away, that's orthographic. As you get closer, that's the general perspective projection. And then when you are looking at the sphere from the surface, that's stereographic. And when you are looking at the sphere from the center, that's uh, the mnemonic projection. So the, there's a called? line. What is uh, mnemonic? Okay. So so I mean we can do this with geographics. Um, so I can say world, and I can say here geo projection. This would be a stereographic. Uh, so the stereographic projection is looking at a sphere from a point of the sphere. And um, okay, the geo grid lines. This this always helps. Okay. Yep. Right. And then there is the mnemonic projection, which would be looking at it from the center. And then orthographic is like the extreme case of being very, very far away. Orthographic. And then you can only see half of the sphere. Okay, now what would show me the mnemonic? Yeah, gnom oh, gnomonic. That's I okay. mnemonic. Gnom yeah. Mnemonic. Yes. And the, the this is a rather complicated one. Is that the one that's relevant for the for the sky? Because you're yeah. seeing from the inside, the sky from the inside. Well, if you want, this would be the what you call this is um, spherical image. If, if we were able to drag this one, it, it would yeah, it's it like a fish the, eye of some kind. Exactly, our eye can only see like a center part of the eye, so we don't see this this enormous uh, distortion right. that we see on the border. I have to go to another meeting, but let's um. Uh, can can you think about these things we've talked about for the mm -hmm. you know and and this astrographics thing looks lovely, wonderful, really cool. Is that is that very close now? I think we we need to discuss all the various options and objects that we can support inside. But but the key ideas are, are there already, and it will take projections and it will take the various frames. So that we just specify from where you are looking at, et cetera. Wow. Very, very cool. Wow. Long, long journey to get here, but this is really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I should run. Uh, for people who are watching these live streams, we are about to start another live stream about a completely different topic, looking at the toolbar. So, okay. Great work. See you later.